points. SB's gained 29. NASDAQ climbs by 133. The U.S. 10 yield at 0.65%. Gold trading higher by 8. WTI crude futures are down 1%. And transports gain 90 points. Leaders to the upside in the Dow, Intel and Microsoft, while Boeing fell 6% and led to the downside. In other news, Airbus is cutting about 15,000 jobs, PayPal to end internal transfers in Russia in August, and the FCC designated Huawei and ZTE as national security threats. After earnings, Micron rose 4%, and wrapping things up, FedEx reports after the bell. Live from the First Breaking News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Charlie? Okay, I think very much, Bill. We'll deliver those earnings as we get them into here live. Breaking news over your Bloomberg type squawk. S-Q-U-A-W-K on your terminal. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Now, in this week's edition of Business Week's Small Business Survival Guide, we continue to look at how small businesses are reopening in a week where, as Jason and I just talked about, some states you know, are being very cautious or rolling back plans. Joining us once again is Bloomberg News Editor Dimitra Kessanidi. She's on the phone in uh, New York City. Joining us also is Abigail Chapin. She's owner of Abigail Rose and Lily, too. It's a woman and children's clothing store that's located in Piermont, New York. She joins us on the phone from Piermont. Nice to have you both with, with us. Dimitra, um, we want to get into Abigail's story, but you guys continue to take a look at what's going on in small businesses. What's the overlying trend here do you feel like they're finding it easier or is it continuing to be pretty difficult i think i would say i think there are still challenges it's not you know it's not something where there was a solution a, um, a way forward and you can just stick with that and not have to adjust i think it's a constant uh, my sense from many business owners not just abigail who we'll be talking to in a minute is that there's a constant reassessment um, we're not seeing, you know, the problems that are happening in some other states right now. And yet that does, you know, it, it would be smart for everybody to kind of look at those things, pay attention to them, give them pause, and think about what the plans are going to be if at any given moment you again have to reassess and move in another direction because of how things are going. And so, Abigail, help us understand uh, what it does look like from your perspective. And I have to say, I'm, I'm sort of virtually waving to you. I'm just across the uh, just across the uh, Mario Cuomo Memorial Bridge, uh, otherwise known as the Tappan Zee Bridge, formerly known as the Tappan Zee Bridge, Tappan here Z, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in Sleepy Hollow. So, what are you seeing oh, yeah. over there uh, in Piermont? Um, well, we are seeing that people, I think because people are not going on vacation maybe as much, not traveling, so people from the tri-state area are coming to Piermont a lot um, on the weekends or as a day visitor. Um, but a lot of the stores, and um, ourselves included, are taking it slow to reopen. Um, we are a, a village with a lot of restaurants, a lot of really great restaurants, and the restaurants are open with outdoor seating. Um, but... Um, so that that's keeping our town really active, and people are coming to visit for that. Um, but yeah, we have a, a few stores in town that haven't opened at all, and we are kind of in an in-between phase ourselves. All right, position open at British pounds at one twenty-three. Seven six seven. So long on British pound with USD. Yeah. was saying there's you know the virus is still kind of on the loose 
Yeah, I mean, that's such an interesting point, too, because, you know, you have to think about yourselves and and your employees as well, because, you know, everybody is, you know, either going home to or, you know, even with social distancing and all that, you know, interacting with people who who could be vulnerable. And I would imagine that that weighs heavily on you. It definitely does. And um, even though, so in the lower Hudson Valley region, we're in, I don't know, I'm going to be confused by which phase we're in. I guess we're in the phase where we can be really fully open with a lot of restrictions on how many yeah. people can come in. Um, but we are, um, we're taking slower and we're having, we're trying to keep only one customer in at a time, where if two customers come in, then one of us leaves. Our space is physically very small and there's not, um, a lot of ventilation. We just have a door. We don't have any wind, you know, we have the shop windows, but no like airflow windows. And it just doesn't feel like the kind of space that you want. Yeah. I mean, it's for social distancing. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, Demetra just got about 30 seconds left here. I mean, as you guys continue to cover this, um, what are you looking to do? Well, I mean, I think we're looking at more stories of just how people are approaching this because, as we've heard with other interviews, no guidance, really, right? Nobody gives you a roadmap to reopening, and everybody's different. Um, and I think it's interesting and helpful and useful to hear about the ways that stores are making these decisions. You'll read more about Abigail and Lily's decisions about their store later in the week when we do a fuller story. But we're looking to track that and just see how it's going and to stay on top of it over the long run um, when bigger decisions are going to be confronted that might be much more fundamentally challenging decisions about the longevity of the business, you know, uh, because I do think now this reality is setting upon us that it's, it's going to be very hard to make our way through this to a point where we're really back and living the way we were living four months ago, five months ago. Yeah, so for sure. That's what we're hoping to do. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both so much. Demetra Kessanides, editor for Bloomberg, joining us on the phone. And Abigail Chapin uh, should point out her father, Tom Chapin. Folk it musician, is. well known, if it was. yeah, folk musician. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, very cool. She's a musician herself, and Piermont, gorgeous town, uh, right on the Hudson River. So, uh, stop by uh, Abigail Rose there, yeah. and Lily too. It's yeah. really pretty. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stocks remain higher in the final hour. Boeing has kept the Dow under pressure all day following cancellation of a big order. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now up nine. The S and P is up twenty six. The Nasdaq gaining 130. Fed Chair Jerome Powell is telling Congress that controlling COVID-19 is vital to the economic recovery. In testimony before a House panel, Powell said the rebound presents new challenges, mainly the need to keep the virus in check. Apple wants its arcade gaming service to be more addictive. It has canceled some games in development, citing insufficient engagement. Sources say it's a sign that many users are leaving Apple Arcade after their free trial ends. Google has acquired Smart Glasses startup North for an undisclosed price. It's Google's latest attempt to develop the technology, which it has pursued for years with limited success. Its Google Glass product flopped with consumers in 2013. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. With COVID-19, so much is unknown. Is this the worst you've seen? But we are committed to getting you every piece of information we can as soon as we can. Tell us about this. On profit at 123.787 on British pound.
My name is Donya. I moved to Manchester in 2010. I came from Afghanistan. The first school day was a bit tough. I had no friends, couldn't speak English and felt a bit left out. My high school teacher was very supportive. She matched me up with friends that spoke the same language as me. Having friends gave me a lot of confidence. I felt like I'm not being left out. Teaching. Every lesson shapes a life. Get free one-to-one -one support with our teacher training advisors to get one step closer to the classroom. Subject to eligibility, search Get Into Teaching. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Stay close to College Hoops Conversation with the College Basketball Talk podcast from NBC Sports. Join Rob Doster and Bobby Reagan for weekly recaps of what's happening in every conference, nostalgic flashbacks to classic games, and big picture discussions on the future of the sport. Yes, they, they found a way to ensure that there was a financial incentive for be able to get paid for for K to go there, if that makes sense. But it's not, there was still a recruitment involved, right? Let, let me think about it like this. Like Search College Basketball Talk on TuneIn to listen. This is Mike Golo Jr. from ESPN's Golik and Wingo. Every morning, Wingo Dad and I sit down and discuss all the news, drama, and highlights spinning the sports world that day. And with TuneIn, you can hear us whenever and wherever you go. Just search Golik and Wingo to start listening today. And as we get set, start cheering, Buckle up, race fans. NASCAR is back in the driver's seat. And you can cut straight to the action here. With the Performance Racing Network on TuneIn, you can hear PRN's live coverage of some of this year's top events. As NASCAR's top drivers, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, and more get back on the track. Search Performance Racing Network to listen and see upcoming races. Live to New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. To the country, Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Kind of lost all concept of where we are in the day. I just know. because of the way we started listening exactly. to... Exactly. Uh, and it was raining, it was sunny, now it's cloudy again. It's I don't so even know true. what's going on. It's so true. Yeah. Um, what we do know and what's going to set us on a straight path is, of course, it's time for the chart of the day. So we're going to get to Dave Wilson in just a moment. Thank God for Dave, right? Keeping us on track. Exactly. And for Charlie Pellet, he's got yes. the latest in the business world. Hey, Charlie. Although we're not predicting the song of the day, it better be final countdown because we've got 29 minutes to go until we wrap up the first half of 2020. Let's begin with the year-to-date numbers just because we have that on the Bloomberg. So far this year, the S&P is down 4.3%. The Dow for all of 2020 is down 9.9%. NASDAQ is up 11.8%. The Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, they're all rallying today. In fact, the S&P is at the best level of the day, up 37 points right now. That is a gain of 1.2%. We've got the Dow up 118, higher by 5 tenths of 1%. And NASDAQ up 159, a gain there of just about 1.6%. 10 years down 9.30 seconds with a yield there of 0.65%. Gold up 4 tenths of 1%, 17.80 the ounce, and a pull back for crude west texas intermediate down 0.8 percent right now 39 38 a barrel for west texas intermediate crude those are the numbers the story behind the numbers stocks up on the final day of the best quarter since 1998 as investors assess better than estimated economic data amid concern over new coronavirus cases and trade relations with china 332 on wall street time now for the small business report here's john tucker New York City is easing pandemic-related restrictions after a three-month shutdown. Office is slowly starting to reopen. And for small businesses that depend on commuters, this reopening can't come soon enough. Glenn Light runs Tescatory Seafood and Sushi with his partners at Grand Central Terminal. And he joins us now. Glenn, have the uh, customers come back? Well, the first uh, opening was June 8th. And the, the week of June 8th and the week of June 15th, um, sales actually dropped 10% from the prior four weeks when there was no quote-unquote opening. And now we just had phase two opening last week. I, I mean, minuscule. Well, why did the business Minus drop off uh, at that one point? Uh, I can't answer that question. Everybody asks me that question. I get the feeling that they're just waiting to see who's going to be first. They announced last week that ridership was still down 90%. And that's your bread and butter, the ridership. Yeah. Those are your customers. A hundred percent. 
Have you gotten any guidance as to when offices will be fully reopened for your planning purposes, when revenue might start to get back to something normal? It seems to be all over the board, so we were really interested in seeing this first week of the phase two opening to see if we saw any, you know, office people coming back, but little to none. Uh, Glenn Light of Tescatory Seafood at uh, Grand Central. Thanks. Best of luck to you. I'm John Tucker. That is your Bloomberg Small Business Report. And John Tucker, we thank you. Three aviation notes briefly. Plane maker Airbus cutting 15,000 jobs. Norwegian Air Shuttle notifying Boeing that the carrier is terminating purchases for all 97 of its remaining jets on order. Boeing down 5.1%. Delta bringing back some beer and wine service on most flights after July 2nd. I'm Charlie Pellet. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Hallelujah, Charlie Pellet. Indeed. Cheers. Indeed. All right, Charlie Pellet, thank Masks you so much. Masks and beers. Masks and beers. <laughs> Social distance. This is Bloomberg. Little Randy Newman for everybody. Yeah. What are you laughing at? I just, I, I'm sort of imagining in 2020 somebody putting out this song and immediately getting canceled. Like, there's no way short people have no reason to live gets produced in 2020. Not gonna you know, that's so funny that you said that because I was watching something else and I'm like, oh my god, this would never not come chance. out today. No, nope, not a chance. Along Dave Wilson lines. taking a I move in stop and profit for British pound to one point twenty three eight one seven. all kinds of companies, retailers, automakers, home builders, you name it. Uh, yeah, it's actually up, given everything that uh, has gone on this year, which is saying something in and of itself. But I digress. What I'm looking at here specifically is the uh, Technology Select Sector Spider Exchange Traded Fund, which more or less tracks the companies in the S&P 500 Information Technology Index. And Julian Emanuel, who's the head of equity and derivative strategy at BTIG, had this chart that looked at short sales of the ETF and the way that they have come down the last couple of years. In fact, the latest reading, we were just about 7.1 million shares worth of short interest, as it's described, stock that's been borrowed and sold. You know, it's that way you can profit if the price goes down. And that was as of June 15th, and that was the lowest number since the end of 2007, which, of course, was right after the end of a, an earlier bull market in stocks. But in any case, it just shows you, you know, with tech companies going up and up and up, that increasingly investors just don't want to bet against them. At least uh, what's happening with this ETF points in that direction. If you want to know more, folks, send me an email. I'll get you the chart, the explanation that goes with it. And everything I do going forward, the email address is dwilson at bloomberg.net. That's dwilson at bloomberg.net. However, Dave Wilson, if you're a contrarian, you might think differently. You know, I actually had uh, somebody <laughs> send me an email <laughs> to that effect. Does that mean it's the time to buy? No, I don't tell anybody what to do. Right. I just put things out there. You decide for yourself. But yeah, right? certainly the contrarian argument would be... You know, given where uh, this particular indicator of short interest has been historically, that uh, it, at least it's something to look at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, tech stocks are, are going to be one of the amazing stories of 2020, I think. I mean, you heard Charlie Pellet talk about, you know, where we are year to date. NASDAQ, 12% in the green. Yeah. No, listen, you know, it, it continues to be, you think about all the guests we have on and the investment guests. I mean, that's one thing that people are like, technology, you know, that's what people will continue to spend yeah. money on. People, individuals, and businesses. So, all right, Dave Wilson, good stuff. And thanks for the Randy Newman song. We had some fun chats on that. We did. Online and offline. <laughs> Oh, just boy. saying. All right. Well, if you were a contrarian, you would think something different. That's my favorite line of the day. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> exactly. Um, coming up, we're going to count everybody down to the closing bell. Kind of a funny day, funny week. Um, 
Let's not forget we get jobs later on, and of course it's a shortened holiday week. But we're going to catch you down at the closing bell and take a look at some of the stocks in the movie. And one of our favorite market guests is going to be with us. She always gets you know down into it and talks yeah. specific names. So looking forward to talking with Hillary Kramer. In the meantime, back to World of National News headlines and back on over to Mark Mills. Hi, Mark. Hey, Carol. Thank you. The U.S. is going in the wrong direction in its effort to contain the novel coronavirus. And daily case counts could more than double if behaviors don't change, according to infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci. Citing crowded bar scenes, Fauci told a Senate panel that new cases of COVID-19 could rise to 100,000 a day, up from the current level of about 40,000. Speaking to reporters in Wilmington, Delaware, former Vice President Joe Biden attacked President Trump for his handling of the coronavirus epidemic statewide lockdowns that so many americans lived under for months were intended to buy us time to get our act together instead of using that time to prepare ourselves donald trump squandered it Lawmakers from both parties called on the Trump administration to provide more information about intelligence that Russia put a bounty on U.S. troops in Afghanistan, with Democrats questioning why President Trump hasn't responded. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, chair of the House Republican Conference, issued her own warning to the Russians. America's adversaries should know, and they should have no doubt, that any targeting of U.S. forces by Russians, by anyone else, will face a very swift and deadly response. In a 5-4 to four ruling, the Supreme Court has made it easier for religious schools to obtain public funds, upholding a Montana scholarship program that allows state tax credits for private schooling. Amy McGrath, a former Marine fighter pilot who built a formidable campaign war chest, emerged Tuesday as the Democratic nominee to take on Senator Mitch McConnell in Kentucky. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Mark Mills. This is Bloomberg. Jenny Liss, Jewish communal leader and philanthropist, talks about why she chose the Jewish Communal Fund for her family's charitable giving. For a lot of people, it would be the convenience factor. I don't have to track anything. If charitable giving is an important part of your life, JCF can help you organize your philanthropy with our donor-advised fund. A fund can be established with a minimum tax-deductible contribution of $5,000, make grants to your favorite charities, and JCF handles all the administration and reporting. At the year end, our board awards community grants from fees and endowment income to UJ's annual campaign. We also make gifts to specific organizations, the elderly, Holocaust survivors, the hungry. The fact that we come together as a community at the end of the year to build community, that's what makes us different. Get better at giving back. To find out more about JCF's impact, visit jcfny.org and download the giving report. JCF, we have a gift for giving. Hey, y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. The market's in focus every... The big Volkswagen event is now on. If you're after a new Volkswagen, we offer to pay your first three months finance payments and an additional 500 to 1,000 pounds contribution to your deposit at 3.8% APR representative. Hello, sir. Do any take your fancy? Well, yes, a new Golf or T-Cross. A Tiguan. No, Passat. Oh, I need to sit down. Here, have a seat. The big Volkswagen event. With every type of car on offer, you may have trouble choosing. With Solutions Personal Contract Plan until 12th of July, exclude Sea Golf at participating retailers only. Minimum 46 months to receive three months finance payments. Indemnities may be required. Volkswagen Finance. Contact your local retailer to book an appointment. Whether you're dreaming of a house the size of a football stadium or a football stadium in the back garden of your house, what you need is dream come true money. 
Luckily, Friday's Euro Million Super Jackpot is a massive £110 million. Pounds. Now that's dream come true money. Euro Millions from the National Lottery. Play online or on the app. Estimated jackpot rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. To help keep you and your loved ones safe, tune in as the latest guidelines from the CDC. Outdoor activities? Wash your hands and don't touch your face. Stay at least six feet from people you don't live with. Wear a mask. Avoid shared surfaces like swings or benches. For the latest stories and updates on COVID-19, search Coronavirus News on TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day. On this day in 1975, Muhammad Ali retains his world heavyweight boxing crown by beating Englishman Joe Bugner by unanimous points decision and rematch in Malaysia. The decision made by the judges and the referee, unanimous decision for Muhammad Ali. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, search sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, Hilton Knowles on the unrest that followed a police killing in his Brooklyn neighborhood more than 50 years ago. Standing by my mother's living room window, I tried tentatively to ask her why our world was burning, burning. She gave me a forbidding look. Boy, be quiet so you can survive, her eyes seemed to say. Hilton Knowles on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. Who says you can't have a laugh while getting serious about America's pastime? <laughs> On the daily podcast, Locked On MLB, comedian and baseball fanatic Paul Francis Sullivan talks about each team, each pennant race, and everything else in the game, from rule changes and controversies to baseball cards and stadium food. For those of you who are not familiar with me or the old show, I love to obsess over baseball. I'm talking baseball over the Super Bowl. We had a TV show in the Division Series during my wedding. Search Locked On MLB on TuneIn to listen today. Hi, this is Mike Tirico, introducing you to Sports Uncovered, the newest podcast series from the storytellers at NBC Sports that will shine a fresh light on the most unforgettable moments in sport. The reason why I'm smiling, I might get in trouble for this. Search Sports Uncovered to start listening today. We're all guilty of spending too much time on social media. Why not add something genuinely useful to your feed with TuneIn? Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to learn about some of the best stuff happening around the app. You might just discover your next audio obsession. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. 13 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell. Stocks higher on the final day of the best quarter since 1998. As investors assess better than estimated economic data amid concern over new coronavirus cases and trade relations with China. We're seeing a late session rally here. The Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ pushing higher. Best level of the day right now on the S&P. P up 39. That is a gain of 1.3 percent. Nasdaq up 158, up 1.6 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 150, a gain there of six tenths of one percent. Ten years down nine thirty seconds with a yield of 0.65 percent. Gold up five tenths of one percent. 1781 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate crude down eight tenths of one percent. 39.38 a barrel. We will be hearing from FedEx after the closing bell. Again recapping equities higher. S&P up 39 again of 1.3%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. I'm driving in my car. I turn on the radio. How about you let me drive? Oh, no. No, no, no. Who's gonna drive you home? Honey, please. I'll do the driving. Drive on. Excuse me. I want to drive. She drives to you present. Just drive, baby. It's the question that drives us. Drive to the Close. That funky music will drive us till the dawn. On Bloomberg Radio. It is time for the Drive to the Close. One of our favorites, friend of the show. I love back when she with comes us. on. I know. I, I love did. when she comes and hangs out with us in the studio, but Me we too. are in a distant world right now. But happy to have with us Hillary Kramer, President CIO at A&G Capital. Hillary, how the heck are you? 
I am doing very, very well. Thank you, Jason. Good. So what's the, what's your world like uh, at this moment in terms of, yeah, just like talking to clients, looking at the market, like it's obviously an upside down topsy turvy world, but you know, you've seen crises, you've seen cycles. Generally, what do you make of this one? The market has hope for tomorrow. And until yeah. something breaks it, until there's a break in it, the market's going to keep, it'll just keep going higher. And Investors are still being forced to go into the stock market, and the Federal Reserve is making it phenomenally easy, you know, easy money, easy money, and uh, I was just looking, a triple B bond, okay, Uh basically, you know, almost junk, is 2.7%. Well, people are willing to buy it because the 10 year is giving them 0.6%. Mm-hmm. So corporations are able to, you know, continue to issue the debt out there and it keeps getting bought. But in terms of Jason, your specific question, because I know it has to do with, you know, where are we finding? What niche are we finding opportunities? We're finding plenty of opportunities, um, especially in these small caps. Like we just, um, we just put a buy on Sally, Sally Beauty, S B H. Small cap did two dollars and twenty six cents last year. It was a dollar this year, and it's just a great undervalued company. But everybody thinks that COVID nineteen is going to hit it a lot worse. The other one that I believe I have spoken about before is Valvoline V V V. Yeah, Valvoline nineteen dollar stock. There's two point three four percent of dividend yield. We love it. We think it could go to twenty four to twenty five. I mean, it's right now nineteen and a half. Dollars, so it's it's not like some double out there, but I'll take two point three percent. And people aren't buying new cars. Okay, so they're not buying new cars. Wait, wait, they wait! Think- I have to get in. Wait, I don't agree with you. I'm out on the roads, Hillary, and I feel like everyone is out there. I see all these new cars with you know. You can tell they have the license plates, the temps, the temporary plates, um, and I just feel like. A lot of people, because maybe they're not going to get on a plane, maybe they're more inclined to get in the car and go for a ride, and they feel safe in their cars. Well, they're they're in their cars, and they're going to need uh, an oil change, that's for sure, because they're going long distances. They're going to need new wipers, and, and that's exactly what Valvoline does. You can do it yourself, or you can go into you know one of their quick lube shops. But in terms of actual cars, look, Mercedes is doing 0% financing. The, the, the car companies are really yeah. struggling out there. Take a look at a Range Rover lot, and they're like practically doubled up one on top of the other. Now, there could be other cars. I also have a Subaru. Subaru is great, but, you know, I, I can tell you, Subaru is backed up in the service center, and that's because people from what I'm seeing, aren't buying new cars. Now, every year, you know, we have an average of how many new cars are being bought, 12 million, 18 million. And, uh, and we have yet to see, actually, what happens. But in the next six months to come, I believe we're going to see lots of traveling. You know, that's for sure, Carolyn. Yeah. But at the same time, we're going to see uh, people changing oil themselves, and there's that pent-up demand for it because they've been home for three months. So we've been talking a lot about tech, uh, Hillary, and tech, big tech especially, has had a nice run. But I have to think that feels a little bit overbought at this point, knowing you a little bit. Like, it, that feels like some place <laughs> that you might not be going is the fangs. Right. Well, it's actually interesting, Jason, what a great point, because with my team, we were just talking about Facebook. I said, why is, I want everyone to say, why is Facebook not down more, having lost all of these advertisers? And of course, it's what percentage is, you know, Dove Soap and what, or Unilever, what percentage is Verizon. But, you know, the market's betting that over the long term, these advertisers are going to come back. You know, they just are. And big tech, the market's ignoring valuations. You know, they really are ignoring them. You know, that being said, it'll be interesting to see if Apple can get up there and hit new highs. Uh, you know, its high was $372 this year. It's at $365. Let's see what happens uh, with, with Apple. That's the one I kind of am keeping my eye on. To me, that's just such an important indicator. Because why? Uh, of, really of really where the consumer is at. Because, oh. right? I mean, consumers can either keep the one they have 
or they can buy a new one if they feel like they have money in their pocket, if they feel confident. So that's where, that, you know, Apple is just a great proxy for understanding where the market stands. But in terms of tech, look, I'm very excited because Etsy hit 52-week new high today. eBay hit a 52-week high. Shopify. And you know what the best one of all? I know you'll love this. Cheery. Match group. Oh. Match oh. group. No, that's, okay? that's, that's actually that's come to our attention rate. recently. Right. It's up 57% mm-hmm. this year. It's $105 stock. Yeah, they have okay Cupid. They have lots of swiping that you can do. But the bottom line is... I think people really fundamentally got lonely and realized how important family and relationships are when they were quarantined at home. And uh, I just think Match probably has potential to continue going up from here, especially if people aren't going to be going into bars. You know, So even the people who are, I guess, maybe swiping more than looking for their long-term love <laughs> were also on Match. So uh, I would say that's one to really watch. So, so yeah. uh, Jason, Tech. Look for those texts uh, that uh, that are very related there, and, and I'm not going to get into Chewy because now I think Chewy, the online. You know, well, you can do that one for me because I, I, Hillary, I love I love dogs. You can do that. You got about twenty okay. seconds. Okay. Chewy, <laughs> Chewy.com, C H W Y. Everyone knows I started with Chewy at twenty three dollars, saying buy it, buy it, buy it, and I think Chewy has. Upside potential from here, Amazon would be foolish not to step in and buy Chewy.com or maybe even some big retailer. So uh, Chewy is, is more popular than ever before. And, uh, and, and Carol, what do you have? you have Afghans? What are the kind of dogs I you have? I have an Irish Terrier Scout. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess if I you, saw uh, If you one. follow, um, <laughs> maybe most summer, I don't know if it's going to be the case this summer, but uh, most of August, uh, Carol's Twitter feed is just uh, filled with pictures of Scout on a boat. So uh, <laughs> My family that's, doesn't that's let me take pick pictures of them, so I've decided I'm going to make the dog Scout, Scout can't argue. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hillary oh. Kramer, always good to catch up with you. Uh, really nice to hear your voice. Be well. Uh, look forward to seeing you on the other side of all this. The close is coming up. We're going to take you there. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Bloomberg Daybreak Eight. My name is Tanya. I moved to Manchester in 2010. I came from Afghanistan. The first school day was a bit tough. I had no friends, couldn't speak English, and felt a bit left out. My high school teacher was very supportive. She matched me up with friends that spoke the same language as me. Having friends gave me a lot of confidence. I felt like I'm not being left out. Teaching. Every lesson shapes a life. Get free one-to-one support with our teacher training advisors to get one step closer to the classroom. Subject to eligibility, search Get Into Teaching. The big Volkswagen event is now on. If you're after a new Volkswagen, we offer to pay your first three months finance payments and an additional 500 to 1,000 pounds contribution to your deposit at 3.8% APR representative. Hello, sir. Do any take your fancy? Well, yes, a new Golf or T-Cross. A Tiguan. No, Passat. Oh, I need to sit down. Here, have a seat. The big Volkswagen event. With every type of car on offer, you may have trouble choosing. With Solutions Personal Contract Plan until 12th of July, exclude Seagolf at participating retailers only. Minimum 46 months to receive three months finance payments. Indemnities may be required. Volkswagen Finance. Contact your local retailer to book an appointment. Ready to talk brass tacks on what's happening in Major League Baseball? Turn to the Effectively Wild podcast from Fangraphs for daily statistics, analysis, and commentary. One team will say, yeah, we're going to keep paying minor leaguers their stipend, and another team will say, we're going to extend the stipend through this month, and then another team will say, nope, we're cutting them off. So are extending it at least through August, which would basically be the end of the minor league regular season. Search Effectively Wild on TuneIn to listen. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Want to get all your college sports news in one place? Turn on the Yahoo Sports College podcast to hear experts Dan Wetzel, Pat Forty, and Pete Thamel Break down the latest NCAA stories from the football field to the basketball court and beyond. I think Reggie should, they should do a video of him running to Heritage Hall and front flipping in. (laughs) Remember that famous like front flip in the end zone that he did? Uh, Wasn't he the one who made that popular? I think think he he was. I think he was, yeah. Search Yahoo College Sports Podcast on TuneIn to listen. 
This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, Hilton Knowles on the unrest that followed a police killing in his Brooklyn neighborhood more than 50 years ago. Standing by my mother's living room window, I tried tentatively to ask her why our world was burning, burning. She gave me a forbidding look. Boy, be quiet so you can survive, her eyes seemed to say. Hilton Knowles on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. Hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. On Bloomberg World headquarters. I'm Charlie Pellet. An update on Wall Street. The Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ all rallying. Folks from principal global investors ringing that closing bell virtually as we await the latest numbers out of FedEx. And it is on to the second half as we wrap up the second quarter. A quarter in which the S&P 500 index rallied 20%. Here are today's numbers. S&P 500 index at the close up 46 points. Ending the session at 3,100 up by one and a half percent. NASDAQ up 184 points today, higher by 1.9 percent. Dow Industrials up 215, a gain there of 0.8 percent. Year to date, the S&P is down 4 percent. The Dow is down 9.5 percent. NASDAQ year to date, as we wrap up the second quarter, higher by 12.1 percent. As for the market backdrop, Hillary Kramer is president and chief investment officer at A&G Capital. She was our guest moments ago, right here on Bloomberg Business week. The market has hope for tomorrow. And until yeah. something breaks it, until there's a break in it, the market's going to keep it'll just keep going higher. And investors are still being forced to go into the stock market. And the Federal Reserve is making it phenomenally easy. You know, it's easy money, easy money. Could be a song or a movie. After bottoming in March, the S&P 500 surged as much as 44% before the rally cooled down in the second half of June. The gauge rose today as a report showed consumer confidence posted its biggest increase since 2011. So an update across the board. Tenure down 10 30 seconds with a yield of 0.65%. Gold up 5 tenths of 1%. 1781 the ounce. West Texas Intermediate Crude down by 9 tenths of 1%. Tesla ends the Tuesday session back above $1,000 after CEO Elon Musk suggested the electric car maker may be able to avoid a second quarter loss. Tesla ending the session today at $1,079. i am Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Wow, thing, think you move me. I got a few moves I know you'll like. and Jason Kelly on like, Bloomberg Radio. Jump at the gun there. Uh, yeah, it was really just a wacky little day. Uh, Charlie, of course, breaking down those closing numbers. We are waiting, as he mentioned, uh, those earnings from FedEx. So as soon as they cross, uh, we'll get them to you and also break them down a little bit later on with um, our not our economics, our Bloomberg intelligence team. But S&P 500, they're definitely, by the end of the day, we were at our highs. And Jason, that meant most names in the index, so uh, really broad-based buying. 439 names in the S&P 500 gaining ground today. 64 lower, 2 unchanged. And as I mentioned, uh, all of the major industry groups in the S&P 500 were higher today. So again, uh, Interesting trade. I know. I yeah. can see you. You're like furrowing your brow. I'm furrowing my brow. It was a, a funky little trade. I right? mean, it, because, you know. I am placing new order to sell short euro at 1.2369. this up was this idea of like, you know, this system isn't working great in terms of getting the money out to small businesses. And, right. you know, we talk to a lot of small businesses. We hear from them throughout our show. And I don't know. I continue to feel like this is a bit of a disconnect. And yet, Hillary Kramer, our good friend, um, you know, just talking about the market really um, is going to continue to grind higher. 
uh, until there's really something that gets in its way, and nothing has gotten in its way so far. Although, I, I would say, well, what's it going to be then? If not this, if not a resurgence in virus cases, if not real worries about, I mean, you have New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut quarantining people who are coming into these states. But I do wonder if, some, to some extent, investors are saying, yeah, okay, they saw a problem and they dealt with it right away, right? Nobody's hesitating. Maybe. And I, I do wonder if there is, remember we talked so much with various CEOs and, and all the leaders that we've been talking to on air about this whole idea that there was no playbook going into this. Yeah. And so I do feel like a playbook is being developed and we're learning that, okay, as soon as we see a problem, we, we now know what we kind of need to do. And I do wonder if there's some of that going on. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we'll watch some of the economic numbers. We'll watch those earnings numbers, right? Micron came out and they had some visibility and that stock shut up and that's an yeah. important indicator for the broader economy. We're going to get FedEx and that too, uh, I love to watch the transportation. Actually, I think FedEx Are they is up? actually crossing the Bloomberg. So let me just bring it up. Yep, fourth quarter adjusted EPS of 253 a share. That's a dollar better than what was forecasted. Uh, they're not providing a forecast, though, for fiscal 2021. Uh, and they also talked up. about, yeah, revenue was $17.4 billion versus an estimate of sixteen point three. So, Jason, that's a, that's a, that's a big beat. Stock's up more than 8% uh, at this moment, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Lee Klaskow is going to be along yeah. uh, to talk with us about it. I mean, listen, also some enthusiasm for some of the financials, including Citizens Financial Group. That is your number one gainer in the S&P, uh, saying that they're going to maintain their dividend. So that's very good news uh, in many ways. And uh, on the other side, uh, your number one decliner, I shouldn't laugh just because w- what a time this stock has had. And they had such a great day yesterday. Uh, Boeing. You know the the market. You're going to say Cody. Cody. I, 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 <laughs> Same <you> know, thing. <laughs> I resisted. Cody is so, Cody is to us what Chewy is to Hillary Kramer. Somebody got on Twitter and they're like, "Enough with Cody. It's a small yeah. market cap. You know, give me something bigger to play with." Anyway, we're, Boeing. We're going to still keep talking about Cody. I will not be dissuaded. I, mean, I will not, not be dissuaded either. Exactly. Uh, Xilinx, though, I mean, mm-hmm. that's another big gainer, and you have to think that they are the beneficiaries. Some of that enthusiasm around chips that we saw yesterday. You mentioned Micron, and uh, Dan Morgan uh, did a uh, did a nice. Uh, did a nice recap of that yesterday with yeah. us and just talked about how much they surprised with their uh, sense of uh, broader electronic demand. All right, let's get to the volatility index report. Continuing to trend lower, we saw about an 8.5% decline yesterday, down 4.3% today. The VIX closing at 30.41. This is Bloomberg. All right, Dave, you're up. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dave. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? We're going for a price on Wilson. Oh, open up the door, it's Dave! Who? Dave! Hey, Mr. Wilson! Hey, Mr. Wilson, Dave Wilson back with us, stocks editor with his stock of the day, Liquidia. What's going on? Liquidia Technologies, Jason. They help drug makers ensure the products they manufacture are safe and effective. The company provides drug production technology that borrows from practices used in the semiconductor and materials industries. Liquidity is also working on a couple of its own products. One is an inhaled version of a blood pressure treatment. The other is a medication for pain after operations. Liquidity was founded in 2004 and went public in mid-2018. The ticker is LQDA. The shares more than tripled in the first three months of trading. Then they plunged as much as 93% to a record low set last December. While liquidity has rallied this year, the recovery faltered today after a couple of events. The company raised $75 million in a share sale, equivalent to a 25% stake, and it agreed to buy a company called RareGen, which promotes a generic drug to treat that same blood pressure issue as liquidity is medicine. Now, you put that all together, the stock sale and takeover sent liquidity to its biggest ever decline. The shares closed with a loss of 21%. God, those biotech names, man. They're just always I, all over the map, right? Absolutely. And I thought you were going to mention, I'm not sure what? if you did, the Coty had the second biggest decline in the yes. S&P 500 today? Yes. It's Fine our favorite Boeing. stock. Yes. Barely. Yeah. 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 Right? I mean, I, I feel like there's a couple of those names, man. And I know that there's often a lot of news about them. But, man, they're either on the biggest gainers, biggest losers, biggest gainers, biggest losers. It just goes back and forth, right? Yeah, and the airline sure that... stock's certainly volatile. And they're down today, yeah. uh, I see, as well. Did I see Kim Kardashian, though, now also a billionaire? 
Yeah. I think Forbes came out with something. Kim Kardashian West. Uh, sorry. Yeah, come on. Don't diss, don't diss Kanye. I'm Kanye's not. doing his own deals. Too. Yeah, I don't want to diss him, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, Just I don't want ask, to diss Dave Wilson ask either. Taylor All right, Swift Dave about Wilson. That one. <laughs> Oof. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. We will catch up with you tomorrow for your thank market you, insights, your chart, and your stock. In the meantime, let's head out to San Francisco. Ed Baxter is there, he's got world national headlines. All right, thank you very much, Jason. Uh, is the U.S. going in the wrong direction regarding COVID 19? Dr. Anthony Fauci says definitely yes. We are now having 40-plus thousand new cases a day. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day if this does not turn around. And so I am very concerned. Yeah, Dr. Fauci says leaders must start acting on scientific evidence. Also separating himself from Donald Trump is CDC Director Robert Redfield, who says we must create uh, an environment that we have universal mask. I think it's fundamentally the most important thing we can do. And uh, the mayor of Miami says people are ignoring science and that cases now threaten hospital capacity. More people there entering the ICU. And Joe Biden making a policy address today. The president gives no direction. And he pits us against one another. We can't continue like this. Half recovering and half getting worse. We can't continue. Half wearing masks and half rejecting science. We can't continue. Half with a plan and half just hoping for the best. Uh, New York's self-quarantine list now includes 16 states. EU has put the U.S. on its no visitors list. Lawmakers from both parties now calling on the Trump administration to come out of the darkness regarding alleged Russian bounties on U.S. military. Republican Liz Cheney. America's adversaries should know, and they should have no doubt, that any targeting of U.S. forces by Russians, by anyone else, will face a very swift and deadly response. And uh, we are now at the T minus four, four seconds for three, blast off. Two, one, zero. Ignition. And there goes Falcon Falcon 9. Working from home, take a little more time for breakfast. Tom Keen. How will this pandemic change your NASDAQ? Jonathan Farrow. When you look at that sector, some of these companies won't exist, will they? And Lisa Abramowitz. They've only continued to increase the delinquencies and defaults. Crunch data topped with fresh world news. Bloomberg Surveillance. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. And now, watch us on Bloomberg Television. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. The doors are opening. When is that moment out in the distant future? Some things will be as they were. Others forever changed. The restaurant industry will never be the same. Follow every new development here on Bloomberg Radio. What do we need in terms of maybe the new school of economic thought? Because the next best thing to magic is insight. It may take nearly a decade for the U.S. economy to recover. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. In-depth analysis, concise reporting. At Honda, we've never looked to other car companies for inspiration. No, it's not a matter of an inflated ego. We just prefer listening to what people really need. For example, the new Honda Jazz Hybrid doesn't have the expected six airbags. It has ten, including one that prevents the driver and passenger from colliding with each other. And because we also listen to our conscience, all our safety features come as standard. No charge. Honda, the power of dreams. My name is Tonya. I moved to Manchester in 2010. I came from Afghanistan. The first school day was a bit tough. I had no friends, couldn't speak English, and felt a bit left out. 
My high school teacher was very supportive. She matched me up with friends that spoke the same language as me. Having friends gave me a lot of confidence. I felt like I'm not being left out. Teaching. Every lesson shapes a life. Get free one-to-one -one support with our teacher training advisors to get one step closer to the classroom. Subject to eligibility, search Get Into Teaching. London. Toolstation are here to help get your job safely started and finished with over 60 branches within the M25. All open with social distancing and contactless click and collect from five minutes and with 20,000 top trade quality products to choose from. Order online now for collection in London branches and get £5 off when you spend over £30 with the code LON530. So, get your job started at toolstation.com. Terms and conditions apply. When you're buying tech online and you want to make sure you get exactly what you need, would you rather talk to a machine or to someone called Mac or Jack or Miguel or Haley or one of our other tech experts on Shop Live, Curry's PC World's online video call experience? Hey, it's Ali. Can I give you a hand? Isn't it nice to get expert advice from another human being before you buy? They're just a click away. Curry's PC World. Talk to our tech experts online with Shop Live. I'm moving my stop and profit for British pound to 123,867. The size of a football stadium or a football stadium in the back garden of your house. What you need is dream come true money. Luckily, Friday's Euro Million Super Jackpot is a massive 110 million pounds. Now that's dream come true money. Euro Millions from the National... Also, I'm cancelling order to sell short Euro. Thank you to all the local heroes. Daksha wanted to help the NHS, so she and her husband Parish cooked 50 meals for a hospital in Harrow. But they didn't stop there. They've set up the Community Response Kitchen, delivering to hospitals, schools and homeless shelters across London. Now they're delivering between one and 3,000 meals every day. And they've achieved all this with no funding, just the support of local businesses and local people. To Daksha and Parish and all the local heroes that keep our communities going. The co-op says thank you. How do you keep track of all your favorite stations and podcasts? Easy. You add them to your favorites list. Just find the audio you want to bookmark and tap the heart icon. Then whenever you want to browse your favorites, you'll find everything under the favorites tab. First, we're told that masks don't work. Then we're told to wear them all the time. One week, we hear that the mortality rate is 2%. The next, well, who knows? In the time of COVID-19, there is so much uncertainty. And so much scientists are learning in real time, along with the rest of the world. So it's hard to know what you can be sure of and what's still a big question mark. Podcast 19 from 538, where we'll explore the evidence behind the science in our fight against coronavirus. I'm science journalist Anna Rothschild. Each week, I'll investigate coronavirus mysteries, keep track of the latest developments on vaccines and treatments. Oh, and I'll try to edit out all the times I shush my family since I'm recording this thing from the chaos of my home. Search Podcast 19 to listen today. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. FedEx delivers shares surging after hours, up now by 7.7%. Fourth quarter adjusted EPS, 2.53 estimates were for $1.53. Revenue, 17.4 billion estimates there, 16.30. FedEx does say it is not providing a forecast for fiscal 2021. Stocks rose on the final day of the best quarter since 1998 as investors assessed better than estimated economic data mid concern over new coronavirus cases and trade relations with China. S&P up 47, a gain of 1.5%, ending the first half at 3,100.29. NASDAQ up 184 points today, up 1.9%. The Dow advanced 217, up by 9 tenths of 1%. Tenure down 10.30 seconds with the yield of 0.65. Gold up five tenths of one percent, seventeen eighty one the ounce. West Texas 
intermediate crude down nine tenths of one percent, thirty nine thirty five a barrel. Again, recapping here, equities higher, a FedEx beat again, S and P up forty seven a gain there of one and a half percent. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. Well, a couple weeks ago, uh, we all saw the pictures from Atlanta and around Georgia, Carol, of long, long lines, really voter disenfranchisement and inequality. Yeah, it's a mess. Writ large, it was a mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, what to do about it has become a huge question in Georgia and beyond. Well, the Atlanta Hawks, the NBA team there, they have an answer. They are loaning their arena, the State Farm Arena, to Fulton County and the state of Georgia to act as what will become the largest voting precinct in the United States for early voting, both for the upcoming runoff election and the general election come November. Steve Coonan, he is the CEO of the Atlanta Hawks, a longtime executive, worked for Coca-Cola, worked for Turner. I caught up with him along with Mike Lynch, my co-host on Bloomberg Business of Sports earlier today. Here's what Steve had to say. We have um, offered our arena, State Farm Arena, which is about 700,000 square feet, to the Fulton County Commission to host voting for both the August runoff and the general election. And we will be the home of early voting for Fulton County, which is a county that has almost a million registered voters. Um, in early voting in Georgia, you're allowed to vote in any super precinct. So. We will take our full-time staff and turn them into full-time poll workers. One of the difficulties Georgia has had is that they aren't volunteer training, but maybe an hour before the polls open. And we're going to train our people who are professionals um, in sports, the sports business to be professionals in the voting business. They'll train for a week. We will open our doors. We will socially distant we will allow for handicap steve take me through the uh, the process here because uh, i'm a boston guy and if this idea surfaced here in boston it would take a decade to get it through all the appropriate people that need to put the stamp on it who'd you have to deal with who gave the green light and were there roadblocks or any impediments um actually <laughs> it moved pretty quickly i, I I kind of had the idea when I was watching the protests the first couple of nights because they were literally at the street intersection of where our arena sits, and that was the epicenter of the protest in downtown Atlanta. And protests have to lead to change, and change is very difficult. The one thing that I thought we could help influence immediately was voting. And so because of the unique structure of the NBA season, this year that we're not starting our season in mid-October as traditionally done, but in sometime in December, our building was open and available. So I um, had a conversation with our coach, who is Coach Lloyd Pierce, who has been leading the Coaches Association on um, social justice and has been very, very active. To bounce it off of him, he liked the idea. Our owner, Tony Ressler, liked the idea. So I placed a call to um, Fulton County Chairman Rob Pitts, who I had known through my career, and he called me back the next day and said, can we tour the arena? And they walked in the arena, and within an hour we had a deal, and we did a press conference 48 hours later. And that's Steve Kuhn and the CEO of the Atlanta Hawks. And, uh, Carol, this is a big deal. I mean, I don't want to go too grandiose and, and big yeah. on it, but this could change in a positive way who gets to vote in Georgia. It will I, change. I think it's pretty remarkable, and I do wonder if other places will follow, uh, you know, and do something very similar. I don't know if you saw in 60 Minutes, they did a whole piece on, like, mail-ins and so on and so forth, because yep. I think we're all looking at, you know, what does this election cycle look? I mean, it's been such an odd year, to say the least, and, you know, I think there's concerns about if the, certainly the virus picks up again around election time, will it prevent people, you know, from getting to the polls? And one of the things that was interesting about some of the primaries that have been held. It wasn't just a case of people getting the polls. It was the people who man the polls, which right. tend to be 
older people who did not want to expose themselves. And that's what created a lot of the backup. So we need to rethink about making sure that people have access, especially after all the conversations we've had over the last 16 weeks and the last month or so about equality and access and making sure that everybody has a fair shot. We have to make sure that everybody equally has a fair chance at voting. Yeah, well, and it's a matter, to your point, it's a matter of training and staffing. So basically the entire, I mean, just to go a level deeper and to reiterate some things that Steve just said, the entire Hawk staff, the arena staff, is going to be trained as poll workers, essentially. Yeah. Like, so it's not going to be volunteers. It's like, oh, you know, you got to get somebody, you know, an older retired person, to your point, to sort of come in. And, I mean, these are going to be the professionals who normally are ushers and concessionaires and things like that at the arena who are going to be running this precinct. And I will tell you, and one of the things that Steve said, and we're going to have the whole conversation later in the week on our Bloomberg Business of Sports podcast, is mm-hmm. other NBA teams are... You know, calling him, asking about this. So think about an idea. Think about a world where business leaders, we've been talking about this. What do people do about it? What's the tangible thing you can do to solve problems? Right. Here's one. I love it. I love it. And this is when, you know, when there's stress, when there's problems, you know, you've got to think differently. And that's exactly what they're doing. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And, And if we think about some of the things, whether it's education, really our political system, like things need a refresh. Yeah. And I think this is something we can do. Like, where is it? Is it Portland or Seattle where they do a lot of mail-in votings and they have boxes around the city. Like, it's just really, really cool and very easy and very accessible. Yeah, and also, shout out Atlanta. I mean, as Steve pointed out in our conversation, it is... Was that for mom and dad? Was that for mom and dad? It's for everybody. I love the ATL. It's for mom and dad. Um, And listen, Atlanta's had a tough time through all of this, you know, wrestling with its own identity. Big protest. Uh, The mayor has done a phenomenal job, but business leaders stepping up, I mean, this is what put Atlanta in this position in the first place in a positive way of doing the right thing from a business perspective perspective. This is about access. This is about money. So hats off to the Atlanta Hawks for what they're doing. May many people do more. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Wall Street closed out the second quarter with a solid advance. It was the market's best quarter since 1998, despite the pandemic. The Dow Jones Industrial Average climbed 217. The S&P jumped 47. The Nasdaq surged 185. American Airlines is getting heat for its decision to resume booking flights to capacity. The director of the CDC expressed substantial disappointment. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he's not sure what went into that decision-making. Calling them a national security threat, the FCC is moving against China's Huawei and ZTE. It has barred small phone companies from using federal subsidies on Huawei or ZTE equipment. It comes as tensions rise between the U.S. and China. Amazon Game Studios is pulling its big-budget PC game Crucible from wide circulation after it was widely panned by critics. The game will return to closed beta status while Amazon works to improve it. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The world's financial decision makers connect on the Bloomberg Terminal. The buy side and the sell side, together. Collaborating across markets and countries in real time. Sharing ideas, negotiating trades, and forming an influential network of over 325,000 financial professionals that helps power global markets. Isn't it time you join them? Request a demo at Bloomberg.com slash professional. If trying to figure out the future of your business... And action! I was offered one! Cut! That's not on the script. I was offered one! Get you! Ladies and gentlemen, I was offered one. Come, boy. I was offered one. Don't say can't work for it. Nine out of ten people said they were offered a great value deal with O2. Get yours today, in-store, online, or by phone. I was offered one, too. O2 Retail Exit Survey 309 of 348 agreed with the statement. O2 offered me a great value deal. For full verification, see o2.co.uk forward slash terms. How do we control coronavirus now? Listen to Steph. She's a bus driver. Now that people are using public transport again, we really need to make sure that we keep each other safe. 
Passengers need to stay two metres apart. If that's not possible, make it at least one metre. I want to see everyone wearing face coverings over their mouth and nose, unless you've got a good reason not to. And when you get to where you're going, you need to wash your hands. We've still got to play our part. Stay alert. Control the virus. Save lives. Give yourself a Diet Coke break. Whether you're dreaming of a house the size of a football stadium or a football stadium in the back garden of your house, what you need is dream come true money. Luckily, Friday's Euro Million Super Jackpot is a massive £110 million. Pounds. Now that's dream come true money. Euro Millions from the National Lottery. Play online or on the app. Estimated jackpot rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Newlywed to newborn. Ordering out to tucking in dream car to driveway isn't it nice when things arrive quicker than expected enter your location into our digital new car locator and it instantly tells you if the bmw you want is available nearby so it'll be with you quicker than you might think search bmw new car locator today it's tune in sports on this day on this day, 1975, Muhammad Ali retained his world heavyweight boxing crown by beating Englishman Joe Bugner by unanimous points decision in a rematch in Malaysia. The decision made by the judges and the referee, unanimous decision for Muhammad Ali. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, search sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. To help keep you and your loved ones safe, TuneIn has the latest guidelines from the CDC. Home alone or with housemates, stay home as much as possible. Try to allow only people you live with into your home. Wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home and isolate from housemates. For the latest stories and updates on COVID-19, search Coronavirus News on TuneIn. Live to New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. To the country, Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. And coming up here on Bloomberg, because we're going to talk about FedEx, uh, a nice surprise for mm-hmm. investors. Uh, some numbers good. Reminds me a little bit of what we heard from uh, Micron yesterday. Obviously, very different businesses, but some optimism. This is why the market's going up. I mean, let's be honest, is because we're getting some nice reports from earnings. But these are both two companies that tell you a lot more about the broader economy. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see what they have to say. So we'll dig into those earnings and the outlook in just a moment. Let's get back to your top business stories. Once again, here is Charlie Pellet. All right. I thank you very much. FedEx uh, X is taking off after hours. It used an efficiency drive and a surge in health equipment deliveries to shore up earnings, softening the drag on profit from an increase in less lucrative residential deliveries. Shares are surging after hours. Looking at the quote on the Bloomberg right now, FedEx up by 9.4 percent. We've got more on the FedEx story with our lead Glasgow coming up in uh, just a moment. A move higher on the final trading day of the first half with the Dow, the S&P and NASDAQ. Stack all surging today. S&P up 47 points, up 1.5%, ending the second quarter at 3,100 even. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 217, a gain of 9 tenths of 1%. NASDAQ up 184, that was a gain of 1.9%. Ten-year down 9.30 seconds with a yield of 0.65%. Gold up 5 tenths of 1%, 17.81 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude down 4 tenths of 1%, 39.54 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate Crude. Fed Chair Jay Powell says the economy has entered a new phase after the coronavirus forced a nationwide shutdown. And with that story, here's Bloomberg's Vinnie Del Judice. 
In testimony to Congress, the Fed chair struck an optimistic note. Hiring is picking up, spending is increasing. But Powell cautioned full recovery is unlikely until Americans are confident the virus is contained. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, testifying with Powell, said any additional financial aid would be targeted at specific industries. Vinny Dale Judice, Bloomberg Radio. And we thank you very much, Vinny. We've got uh, Vice President uh, Mike Pence holding a press conference in Washington, D.C. Let's join that now live. We are with you. Uh, we are working with the governors in your state to ensure that they have the resources uh, and the support uh, to meet this moment and provide the level of health care that any one of us would, would expect for a member of our family. Um, but to all of the American people, uh, I say uh, on behalf of the President of the United States and the White House Coronavirus Task Force that because of all that we've done over the last four months, we're ready. Uh, we're in a much better place than we were four months ago or even two months ago. Part of our briefing today will focus on the progress that we have made uh, and our ability to respond uh, to the outbreaks that we're seeing occurring in states, particularly across the South. Um, I've uh, been traveling across the country. I was uh, uh, actually in Texas over this past uh, weekend, received a full briefing from Governor Abbott uh, about uh, their response. Uh, and um, uh, I will be traveling to uh, Arizona tomorrow, uh, meeting with uh, Governor Ducey, and I'll be able to uh, confirm to him uh, that uh, we were informed today uh, that a team deployed by FEMA of uh, 62 uh, disaster medical assistance personnel are on the ground in Arizona. We're also currently processing uh, a request from Texas and we're in consultation with other states. As you will hear in a moment, uh, with regard to testing, with regard to personal protective equipment, with regard to ventilators, with regard to therapeutic medicines, we are in a strong position uh, all across the affected areas of the country to meet this moment. But in consultation with the states, uh, we're, we're going to make sure that they have the reinforcements in healthcare workers. Uh, and, uh, and I'm pleased to confirm today that uh, 62... Uh, DMAT, or Disaster Medical Assistant Team members, uh, have arrived in Arizona. I'll also be traveling later this week uh, to uh, the state of Florida, uh, where Dr. Burks and I will also receive a briefing along with Secretary Azar about that uh, state's response. At the present moment, all 50 states in the country are uh, reopening and have done so in one degree or another since uh, the beginning of May when we issued our guidelines to open up America again. At this moment in time, because of the rising cases, at least four states have taken action to close down bars, limit capacity in restaurants, uh, and, uh, uh, and another 10 states have slowed down or postponed certain reopening efforts. And, uh, and let me make it very clear that we fully support the new guidance that's been issued uh, by the governors in these states. Uh, we truly do believe that these, uh, these prudent measures and uh, additional guidance and steps will make it possible for us to continue to move our nation forward, to continue to reopen uh, in a safe and responsible way while putting the health, the health of our citizens first. I thought Dr. Fauci uh, uh, put it well. Uh, in a recent task force meeting when uh, he said, and I think also testified today, that we should not look at public safety measures as an impediment to opening up America, that rather we should look at them as the vehicle to opening up. As we see rising cases, and particularly those 12 states where we have a combination of rising cases and, and positivity, um, the American people deserve to know that our best health experts say it's not an either-or, it's not whether we continue to open up or whether we move in an opposite direction, but rather it's whether we take these prudent measures that, that will uh, slow the spread and put the health of our citizens first. Uh, uh, our governors in the affected areas and their public health officials are, making, uh, are taking strong action to keep their states open uh, while, while slowing the spread and, uh, uh, and putting the health of their citizens first, and they have our full support. Uh, let me say again, as I said at the outset, um, the American people deserve to know that we're in a much better place today. Uh, thanks to the whole of government approach, the whole of America approach that President Trump initiated at the very outset of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, the uh, in Working in cooperation with 
agencies across the federal government, uh, working with the private sector across this country. Uh, we literally have scaled now a million tests have been performed across the United States. And as uh, Admiral Brett Girard will detail momentarily, we're, we're testing between 500 and 600,000 Americans every single day with the capacity to significantly increase that through the innovation of what is known as pooling. And when it comes to medical supplies, uh, FEMA has uh, facilitated the delivery of literally billions of gloves and gowns and masks and as Admiral Polovchek will uh, detail in just a few moments, we are in continuous contact with not just states, but with hospitals in states across the country. And we continue to receive very strong support reports about uh, the support they've received and the supplies that are available to meet this moment. Also, we're in a much better place because of the availability of what's known as therapeutics or medicines to treat people that have contracted the coronavirus and are experiencing severe symptoms. Uh, and Dr. Steve Hahn of the FDA is here and he will speak about uh, the progress that, uh, that we are making, uh, whether it be uh, the availability of remdesivir, which we're distributing another tranche this week, uh, the use of blood plasma, steroid treatments, and, and also we continue to hear very hopeful signs about the continuing, continuing progress for developing a vaccine for the American people. And so um, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yield to the team here to give you updates. I'm going to begin with Secretary Azar, who will update us on our national response, including um, uh, important work the CDC did today with regard to opening up our schools again. And, uh, uh, and then uh, Admiral Girard will update us on testing, Admiral Polovchek on supplies, uh, Dr. Hahn on medicines. Uh, and then finally, we'll, uh, we'll hear from Dr. Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General of the United States, who will give uh, counsel to uh, every American in the states that are impacted and uh, all across the country about, uh, about best practices. Uh, so to, uh, to every American in states that are seeing rising cases and, and rising trends in positivity, we want, we want to assure you we're with you. And we're deploying at the President's direction the full resources of the federal government to meet this moment and working in strong partnership with your state and local officials. And to every American, um, we want to assure you that we're ready, more ready than ever before, uh, to meet this coronavirus pandemic because of the, because of the resources uh, that our president, uh, the agencies at the federal government, the steps and deployed and efforts at the state government and and mostly because of what the American people have done and demonstrated that they have the ability to do. I mean, the truth is, um, while we've, we've made great progress on making availability testing and supplies and, and medicines, we all need to do our part. Uh, we know how to slow the spread. And the common sense measures uh, that, uh, that we outlined uh, in our phased approach to open up America again, the, the guidelines that apply to all of the phases uh, are, uh, ought to be embraced by every American. Uh, wash your hands. Practice good hygiene. And wear a mask. Uh, wear a mask uh, when, uh, whenever your state and local authorities say it's appropriate. Uh, so where it's always a good idea to wear a mask when social distancing uh, is not possible. Uh, we're all in this together, and we have every confidence uh, that as... Uh, as, as we met the moment before when we saw this pandemic first strike uh, in the Northwest and then strike so hard around uh, the greater New York City area, then New Orleans, then Michigan, that with, a, with a whole of government approach, a whole of America approach, cooperation of the American people. Um, we'll do what we did earlier on in this pandemic. Uh, we'll slow the spread and we'll save lives. And with that, um, Secretary Azar and members of the team will brief, and then we'll have time for questions. Ms. Secretary. Well, thank you, Mr. Vice President, for honoring HHS and the Commission Corps with your presence today, and thank you for your leadership of the President's All of America response to COVID-19. I'd also like to thank Admiral Girois and Vice Admiral Adams for their service during this crisis and for their dedication to strengthening the Commission Corps. The men and women of the Commission Corps have been and will continue to be central to our COVID-19 response. 
And on all six points of our strategy to defeat the virus, surveillance, testing, containment, health care capacity, vaccines, and therapeutics. To every member of the Commission Corps who's gone into harm's way in this crisis, who's spent time away from home and loved ones, we are deeply grateful. I want to mention one particular step forward we took today to help Americans get back to work and back to school while protecting us from the virus. New guidance from the CDC as to how higher education institutions can protect students and their employees. In particular, it offers recommendations for how and when testing should be used for students, faculty, and staff, including both testing for symptomatic individuals and testing for asymptomatic individuals who've had possible exposure to the virus. The guidance also notes that in areas with moderate to substantial community transmission where resources allow, colleges and universities can work with local health officials to consider testing asymptomatic students and staff who have no known exposure. This may make sense in order to identify outbreaks and inform control measures and would especially apply to groups like those living in congregate housing. This guidance relies on what we've learned about the virus in recent months. In the very near future, we will also be releasing similar guidance around K-12 through schools, recognizing how important safe schools are to reopening our country. These are just two examples of the science-based resources that we're providing for state and local health departments and other institutions as they work with federal assistance to continue the fight against the virus and to reopen our country. We need to reopen America. We have to get back to work, back to school, back to worship, back to health care. But we must all play our individual parts to enable this reopening. We can reverse these outbreaks and prevent future ones by doing what the president has called for since the beginning in his guidance. Practice social distancing. Wear facial coverings where social distancing is not possible. And practice good personal hygiene. By doing so, you protect yourself. You protect vulnerable household members. But you also protect the person you may be standing next to in the grocery line. And you don't know whether they're vulnerable. You have no way of knowing whether they're at high risk of severity, hospitalization, or fatality. You protect them. There are just three simple steps to keep reopening. Social distance. Wear facial coverings when you can't social distance. And practice good personal hygiene. It's all we need to do to keep reopening. We can work, go to school, go to worship, re-engage with health care if we all as individuals practice good, responsible behavior to protect each other and to protect ourselves. So thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Secretary, again, you did us incredible honor by being here and honoring and appreciating the 6,100 women and men of the Commission Corps. We do say women and men. We are a 55% female service uh, in the most diverse within the country. I'm um, going to take a few minutes and talk about testing. As both the Vice President and the Secretary said, we're um, a world different than we were in March. At that time, in early March, we'd only done a few thousand tests. Now we're doing 550, 600,000. We've actually gone over 600,000 per day on occasion, over 33 million tests. And I think all you know, there's some components to this. There's sort of the front end, somebody to take the swab or to supervise you doing that swab. You've got to have the supplies there, you've got to have the machines, and you've got to have the laboratory tests. So on the front end, Way back in March, this had to be done by a practitioner with a very deep nasopharyngeal swab in full PPE. We could not get to where we are today from there without a lot of science and a lot of collaboration from the FDA. Because we're able to validate nasal self-swabbing, those 41 sites turned into, which you saw today in the press, over 600 retail pharmacy sites that have now been extended for several months uh, continuing from their first June 30th. Hey, yeah, I'm starting. I um, want to play stop for British pound higher. So hopefully I will sell it today. So the stop on profit will go to 1.2391.7. Okay. So if not, we will see. I just I don't want to keep it overnight. 
we'll see how it's going to be. Okay. from the FDA uh, to take it the next step further, and that's home self-swabbing. There are some authorizations that are home self-swabbing and some that are video-assisted, so we could eliminate a lot of the whole front-end problem where we are. As I said many times, we're in scaling testing on a routine basis, and I've told you that assuming no technological innovations, we will easily be at 40 to 50 million tests available uh, by September. That's a very conservative estimate, very conservative estimate, because the industry tells us we'll be at a much higher place. But what are some of the innovations we're seeing right now being implemented, again, under the guidance of the FDA, validated high quality, uh, and that's pooling. You've heard, you've heard something about pooling. Pooling is very helpful because it could combine uh, more than one sample in a single laboratory assay. So imagine this situation where I wanted to know if all of you were, were potentially negative. And I thought you were probably negative because you don't have a history, you're not uh, febrile, you haven't been in contact with anyone. So uh, you could collect your own swabs, you can put them in tubes, and we can take all of those tubes, or at least 10 of them, and put them into a single tube and do that assay. If, if that one single assay is negative, then you're all negative if you do it uh, appropriately. So you can leverage two times, five times, possibly even up to 10 times or even more. This is being done now in many universities and many commercial laboratories, and we are absolutely working with everyone in the community to do this. It's not right all the time, but it's right a lot of the time. So of those 18, 20 million tests per month that we'll probably be doing uh, in July, or out of those 35 to 50, 60 million tests we're doing in September, you can do the math and multiply at least a portion of those by two, three, or even five. So that's where pooling is going to get us. The final thing I would like to say is um, the RADx program, um, that's the, the, uh, di the diagnostics program at NIH, as well as the Biomedical Advanced Research Development Authority, are really making great inroads to innovation. Um, this was funded to sort of get us to the next step, to provide more rapid tests, higher quantities of tests, completely different kinds of tests. Now, again, we're not assuming any breakthrough innovations, uh, but there's going to be some. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, the NIH director, Francis Collins, the BARDA director, Dr. Gary Dispro, and I work uh, literally uh, on a daily basis to make sure that the innovations that come on will be translated immediately to our public health system. So uh, I'd be happy to take your questions later on today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Admiral Drew, and thank you for your, your, your great efforts. I know I speak for people all across this country when I express how proud we are of the extraordinary progress. And the way we've scaled testing across America is historic. Uh, when I was tapped to lead the White House Coronavirus Task Force, we had done less than 8,000 coronavirus tests. And to think that in the intervening months, now 33 million tests, and the ability to scale beyond that, it's a, it is a great comfort to the American people um, and, a, and a great tribute, uh, a great tribute to the public-private partnership that President Trump forged early on. Uh, I think it's also been historic to see the progress that we've made on personal protective equipment, and particularly for Americans uh, in, uh, in the four states where 50 percent of the cases are occurring or the 12 states where we're seeing a combination of rising cases and positivity. We want the American people to know that the personal protective equipment for our health care providers uh, is also at a historic level. And I've asked Admiral John Polovchek to come uh, and to articulate where we stand today uh, with the hospitals and health care facilities in the impacted areas and, uh, and our ongoing effort to ensure uh, that the extraordinary doctors and nurses and healthcare workers that are at this very hour ministering to Americans uh, struggling with the coronavirus uh, have the masks, the gowns, the gloves, the ventilators, and all the personal protective equipment they need to render that care. But Admiral Polovchik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, uh, back in March, mid-March, uh, when I was moved from the Pentagon to, uh, uh, to FEMA, the President gave me uh, one task, um, provide our health care workers uh, the supplies they need, um, 
what they need, uh, when they need it. And uh, I'm going to give you a short update today. Uh, and I think the theme is um, uh, we have more. Uh, 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 they have more. So um, I, from, uh, from that time in March, uh, mid-March until now, we are in a fundamentally uh, better position. I'm going to go through some details uh, that, that uh, makes me that, uh, that confident. Uh, and uh, personally, those that personally know me, I'm a, I'm a glass half full type of person. Uh, and so uh, uh, for these, uh, these details, I find very encouraging. Uh, uh, as we, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, tried to ascertain... Well, I'm placing order to play uh, to stop for British pound even higher. I'm already two thousand pounds to ground up. So at price one point twenty three nine six seven. Right. I really need to close this position today. Okay. All right. The seventy percent of the states have at least. 30 days of supply on hand, if not 60. Uh, there are many states that have more than 60 that have uh, targets of 90 and uh, looking to achieve that. Um, those state calls uh, have felt me confident of the numbers that we're putting into our uh, modernized national stockpile. Here in recent weeks, with the um, uptick in cases, uh, where Dr. Burks has highlighted uh, down to the county level, uh, my team has called um, those hospitals, uh, and I am uh, here to, to uh, provide um, uh, a synopsis of that. Uh, we've talked to hospitals in Dallas, uh, Phoenix, Houston, um, and, uh, and on down the line. Uh, many of them are reporting 30 to 40 days of supply of on hand. Um, now, there are some sporadic um, shortages, um, but mostly in the size of um, the size of masks. Um, could I have more small masks? Uh, so we took that information, and I, I talked to 3M today, as a matter of fact, uh, and they've already changed based on discussions with my team. They've already changed their production to to uh, produce uh, more small and extra small masks. So essentially. Um, uh, uh, almost an even split, 40, 45, 50 percent more smalls uh, uh, to then uh, to the rest to, to normal supplies. Um, so states are saying that they have supplies. Hospitals in areas where um, there are outbreaks are having more supplies. Another data tool, uh, the National Health Safety Network, uh, where uh, it's CDC run uh, network where hospitals report days of supplies on hand across the nation. Um, those supplies back in March, there were many hospitals that were saying that they had less than three days. Now, folks have multiple weeks, the majority of hospitals. So we are, we are fundamentally uh, in a different place. Um, uh, one of the things we did was we assembled all of the business system data for um, the medical supply chain, for the commercial medical supply chain. I have that uh, resident at FEMA, and I can see the demand from hospitals and the supply to them. Uh, and those numbers are coming together, uh, where supply is getting much closer uh, to, met, to demand. All at the same time that states are stockpiling, municipalities are stockpiling, hospitals are stockpiling, and the federal government, uh, with, uh, the Health and Human Services Strategic National Stockpile, uh, is being, re, uh, being replenished. So let me, uh, let me shift topics to the nursing home project uh, just real quick. We're on our second round of the nursing home project. Um, you know, those give uh, uh, a little bit more than a week's worth of supply. Uh, each, uh, each round has, uh, you know, almost 2 million eye, uh, sets of eye protection, 14 million masks, 63 million gowns, uh, gloves, uh, and 13 million gowns to get to the 15,000 plus nursing homes. Uh, we're 60% through the second round uh, and 45% have been delivered. And finally, let me just touch on ventilators. Uh, so back in March, the, the national stockpile had approximately 19,000 ventilators. Today, ready for deployment, we have 48,000. By next week, if the production schedules hold, 
we'll have 55,000. So we are, we are in a fundamentally different place for supplies uh, than, uh, than we are. Um, uh, 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 pending uh, your questions later, uh, Mr. Vice President, that's all I have. That's great. Thank you. And in one other area where we've um, made great strides, and we hope and pray to make good strides in the months ahead, has been in the area of uh, therapeutics and in the headlong pursuit of vaccines. When we see the extraordinary decline in fatalities um, over the last two months, uh, it, it is a tribute first to our health care workers, to all that they've done, uh, but it's also a tribute to the availability of uh, of what are known as therapeutics, medicines like remdesivir, the new steroid treatment that you all have heard about, the availability of, uh, of, of plasma treatments. And, uh, uh, and I wanted uh, Dr. Steve Hahn of the FDA to update us on, uh, on the medicines as well as where we stand on vaccines. Dr. Hahn. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Vice President. Um, uh, President Trump uh, asked the FDA early on in the COVID-19 pandemic to reduce any unnecessary regulatory barriers to get medical products into the hands of Americans. And uh, FDA created an emergency review and development program for therapies called the Coronavirus Treatment Acceleration Program. And we have supported that program since that time, and it continues to this day. I'd like to uh, first start by telling you that the pipeline of therapeutics treatments that we see across this country, the great academics, researchers, private sector, that pipeline is very robust. Currently, currently, as a recent count, FDA is monitoring more than 144 active trials of therapeutic agents for COVID-19 and another 457 development programs for therapeutic agents is in the pipeline. So we're in a vastly different place than we were three months ago, two months ago. The nation's work is paying off, as we saw the positive results of the recent National Institutes of Allergy and Infection. Well, at last, it closed. So a closed position on British pound and at 123.967. And I've got 2,000 pounds in profit. Okay. mortality and severely ill patients. Those two therapies alone uh, will have a significant impact on the natural history in the course of this disease and provides great hope for those who get sick with this and are hospitalized. But our work isn't done. More is in the pipeline. As I mentioned, over 25,000 patients in the United States have been treated on our expanded access convalescent plasma program. Now, just as a reminder, that's where we take antibodies, the antibodies that are naturally developed by someone who has gotten the COVID-19 virus and then has recovered. And then we administer that to someone who's sick with COVID-19. This has worked in other diseases in the past. We have some preliminary safety data in over 20,000 patients. It shows that this therapy be safe and we're currently evaluating the, the efficacy of this the effectiveness of this program we have great hope for that now that information will tell us a lot about if a person develops antibodies how protective are those antibodies what level do you need and it also gives us uh, information for the next set of therapeutics that are coming down the pike already in clinical trials we have a number of, uh, of, of agents called monoclonal antibodies which are synthetic forms of antibodies so genetically engineered antibodies that can then be given. Again, these have been used in other infectious diseases, and we have hope that they would also work in these diseases in COVID-19. And we expect the readout of those trials over the next several months, possibly late summer and early fall. So I just want to switch gears to, to talk about vaccines. Um, under the leadership of, of, of Secretary Azar and Operation Warp Speed, um, we have seen the sponsorship of a number of different vaccines. But we know that vaccines are being developed around the world, and FDA has received applications from double-digit number of sponsors regarding vaccines. Four vaccines have been approved for moving into clinical trials. That is authorized to go into clinical trials so we can get the data on those vaccines. And another six are in the pipeline for 
us to review. We've seen recent reports of interesting and I think positive data regarding the immunogenicity, that is how well these vaccines uh, stimulate an, immuno, an immune response in people and also regarding their safety. More work needs to be done, but I think we've seen some positive results to date. And obviously, we need to make sure that those studies mature so that we can have the data we need. Now, FDA recognizes the need and urgent need to develop a safe and effective vaccine for COVID-19. And we've been working collaboratively with all industry um, and all of our partners in academia, um, as well as in government on that. Today, we uh, took additional action to facilitate the timely development of safe and effective vac vaccines to prevent COVID-19 by providing new guidance with recommendations for those developing COVID-19 vaccines. And the goal of this guidance is to assist in the clinical development and ultimately, hopefully, the licensure of a vaccine for the prevention of COVID-19. Now, it's very important to have this guidance because it provides regulatory transparency and clarity to the developers. What is FDA expecting to see in terms of data Data and science in the context of clinical trials so that we can make the absolute best decision for the American people. Now, while the FDA is committed to ex expediting this work, we will not cut corners in order to approve a vaccine. And we will make clear through this guidance what data are needed to meet our regulatory standards. I remain cautiously optimistic about our timeline with respect to vaccines. We will see what the data show. But clearly, from a therapeutics point of view, there are more tools in the toolbox for the great providers of this country uh, to treat patients with COVID-19. And then finally, I'd like to add to what uh, the Vice President said, and that is mask wearing, social distancing, hand hygiene and other forms of hygiene. This is how we're going to keep America open again. I've heard from colleagues around the country, my former colleagues in, in cancer care, from friends and families, nobody wants to shut down again. Our way of keeping open is with these you know, public health.